Oh, hi there. Welcome to another episode of the Okanagan Gardener and Forager Channel. I'm here between some trembling or quaking aspen. These trees can grow forming large stands or colonies that can cover a whole bunch of hectares and can live for thousands of years. They also have some edible uses, some medicinal uses, and a bunch of other interesting stuff about them. So I'm going to tell you about them. Trembling aspen or quaking aspen, scientific name is Populus tremuloides. These grow in colonies. They can spread by seed, but the growing conditions need to be very particular for them to be successful. So usually how they spread is by underground roots and they can form large colonies. So all these trees around here could be genetically identical from one that have spread underground. And a way you could tell them apart because they're all around me. It could be that in the fall, say, they all change colors, the leaves all at once, and then they'd all drop at once. So if there's different uh, genetically separate individuals, you could tell them apart in the colony that way. Anyway, how they grow, they start out, you know, with a little one like this, but as they get bigger, they self prune. So the branches start to fall off and they start to have just the leaves concentrated at the top. So these colonies that they can form could be well, here the you can see the leaves go the namesake and these colonies can be thousands of years old and they can cover hectares and there's one in uh, Utah and it's called Pando and it's thought to be as old as 80,000 years old and it might be the oldest living organism in the world Trembling aspen might have the widest distribution of any tree in North America. It can be found from Alaska to Newfoundland and go south to California, Mexico, and Virginia. And the bark is white, but kind of greenish. If you can see, hopefully a little bit of greenish. And they're deciduous, so that means they lose their leaves in the fall or winter. But that greenish bit, they actually photosynthesized throughout the winter which as far as I can tell is unique among deciduous trees in North America so they continue producing energy over the winter and it starts out that color when it's younger but then as they get older maybe near the bottom gets fissured has these like cracks in them and there's something with the bark it's covered in this white stuff and what you can use it for is it can be used as a is a mild or yeah a mild sunscreen if I could I'm just gonna nerd out a little bit on the tree uh, I think it's well maybe it's okay because chances are if you're here watching this video you might be a bit of a nerd too nerd! oh you can see the green tinge there, hopefully, and I think it's incredible that these things can photosynthesize through the winter. Anyways, a couple more things to look for are the, there's some horizontal lines, and also look for black spots like this on the trunk, and that's where the tree has self-pruned. You can see here where these branches, there were branches and now they're in a state of falling off. The tree self-prunes as it gets taller. And, I'll show you the leaves. The name is Trembling or Quaking Aspen. And what causes that... ...is the petiole, which is the leaf stalk. Hopefully you can see it's flattened. Look at it the, on the side. There, it looks like it's been, you know, it looks like it's been flattened. And what that, I guess, does, when there's the slightest breeze, they'll flutter in the breeze easily. So they're rounded, the leaves, rounded, or round, with round toothed edges. You can see there's sort of teeth there, and it has a point. And they are green on the top side, lighter green on the bottom. 
in the fall they'll turn yellow some of them here you can see they're starting to turn turn yellow or orange sometimes before they drop and they have catkins which are like the flowers they're long drooping flowers this is the fall so you can't see them because they're gone the catkins in the spring are like long drooping flowers that hang down and there you can see them fluttering in the breeze. Trembling aspen have some edible uses. The catkins in the spring are edible and they're uh, high in vitamin C. Some indigenous people ate the leaves as a famine food. And so, you know, usually if you hear a famine food, it's probably not very good. And I think uh, they'd probably be better in the spring. They kind of have a, well, an aspirin-y taste. And uh, the cambium, which is the inner part, it's uh, like inside the bark and outside the wood. It's it's where the where the tree's growing. The cambium in the spring was eaten by lots of different indigenous groups in the spring when it tastes sweet. Uh, and The catkins could be a good survival food. Same with the catkins and cambium. In an emergency survival situation, you could use them. But uh, the uh, cambium was eaten, but only eaten fresh. It doesn't uh, store well, so it wasn't, it wasn't stored for any long-term use. Another edible use for trembling or quaking aspen was some indigenous groups burned the wood and then used the ashes as a uh, as like a salt that was prior prior to European contact and trembling aspen is um, it's a member of the willow family so the bark leaves and flowers or catkins contain aspirin like salicylates which can relieve pain and reduce inflammation and fever now uh, what you could do with it you could make tea or tincture from the bark and that has been used to regulate the release of bile to help with digestion. And the powder, like I said, could be used to apply to the skin as a mild sunscreen. The bark tea has also been used to relieve cough and sore throat as well as to kill parasitic worms. Now one thing, uh, one indigenous group, the Cree, used the aspen tea, which they used it as a spring tonic, especially for the elderly and uh, used to treat things like rheumatism, diarrhea, liver and kidney problems. And what was done was taken three or four spoonfuls of the grated inner bark, either fresh or dried, and boiled it in three cups of water, and then take the resulting tea in half cup doses every two hours at the first sign of infection. I'll say a warning about it, about as uh, trembling aspen or quaking aspen that you should not use it if you are, if you have hypothyroid conditions. And also I'll say, I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice. And look at it flutter. Uh, something else, some other interesting uses for trembling or quaking aspen. The wood is light and odorless and it splits easily. It's been used for things like paddles, bowls, and matches. But nowadays what it's often used for is particle board and to make chopsticks. Also the wood, it doesn't splinter easily. So it's been used, it's often used now for things like park benches and sauna, sauna benches. So I think to help avoid getting a splinter in your bum. Uh, so the bark and leaf tea has been recommended by some people or other other things made from trembling aspen to help relieve anxiety and I've seen it described in a way that and maybe this is you know my opinion but the way the leaves flutter so easily perhaps you could think about it similar to how some people have trouble with anxiety it the tree is really uh, affected by external influences and that's how some people feel Sometimes they can easily be affected by, you know, outside influences. So it could be recommended for people who have anxiety that this tree might offer some help.
If you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Thanks for watching.